Then Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And in another version in Mark 14, it says she took an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume, made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. Oils of the Holy Week. It's Hunt for Wellness, episode number 91. Welcome to Hunt for Wellness. I am John Hunt. And I'm Christy Hunt. And this is the show where we help you live your best life, mind, body, and spirit. And this episode of Hunt for Wellness brought to you by waterdistillers.com, great machines that provide great water for your great wellness. Go and find out more at waterdistillers.com. All right, Holy Week. Yeah. At least that's when this is being released. Now, someone may be watching this in the middle of the summer and say, this is not Holy Week. Right. But Holy Week's usually defined as the week between um, Palm Palm Sunday Mm -hmm. and Easter Sunday. Mm -hmm. Right, And all kinds of things happened in that last week of the life of Jesus, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. And um, so I know that when we were reading through the Harmony of the Gospels, Mm -hmm. which I see you have, uh, the Harmony of the Gospels is a book that has the Bible, the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, listed uh, in chronological order, not only in chronological order for when they started, uh, but also the exact passages side by side as they relate to different things. So in some Gospels, there may only be in one or two, and others, it's in all four. And so you'll either have one, two, three, or four columns in your book. Very interesting read if you haven't done that before. It's called The Harmony of the gospel and um and it's really cool to read it through on holy week yeah yeah what happened day by day and so we're doing that this week and it's very cool now we're also going to talk about the oils yes Uh, oils were used all the essential time. oils essential oils mm-hmm. uh, for all kinds of different purposes uh, and we read about it all over the Bible how many times oh how many times oh hundreds hundreds yeah. of times yes yeah. and they were just very common commonly used it's what they used uh, for healing themselves yeah. it was their medicine it was used uh, by the priests the priests were also like, the doctors of the day, yeah. and they would pray for you and <clears throat> anoint you with oil. They were also used in the ceremonies. There's holy anointing oil for uh, the tabernacle when yeah. it was dedicated, and the priests putting it on them. Um, and, well, and the life of Jesus. I mean, he got gifts when he was a baby. That's right. Frankincense was one of them. Right. And then... What else? Uh, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Yes. Right? Yes. Mm-hmm. And then even... As he prepared for burial, they, you know. Yes. So that's the first one in Holy Week. Really? There, there was a dinner. <clears throat> this is um, John 12. There was a dinner um, given in Jesus' honor. Mm-hmm. Martha was serving. Lazarus was, am- was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair. And in another version in Mark 14, it says she took an alabaster jar, a very expensive perfume made of pure nard. She broke the jar and poured the perfume on his head. And some of those uh, present were saying indignantly, indignantly to one another, why this waste of perfume? It could have been sold for more than a year's wages Hmm. and the money given to the poor. And they rebuked her harshly. And we find out in John that it was Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, was saying this. He was the one who controlled the money too, right? Yes. And Jesus said, leave her alone. Why are you bothering her? She's done a beautiful thing to me. Mm -hmm. The poor you will always have with you. And you can help them anytime you want. But you will not always have me. She did what she could. She poured perfume on my body beforehand to prepare 
for my burial. And I tell you the truth, wherever the gospel is preached throughout the world, what she has done will also be told in memory of her. And we're talking about it right now. Yeah. What she did. Well, and I think too, you know, in the translations, you have the words perfume. That's a pretty broad term. I know we've talked about this on other shows for essential oils. When they when they distill the essential oils, you know the perfume part, the you, aromatic, the aromatic the essential oil, yeah, is is on the bottom. I uh, no, on the top, on the top. The I know the essential oils on the top, but the perfume water is on the bottom. Yeah, floral water. Floral yeah, but water. they're talking in this perfume. It can also be translated ointment. Yeah. Uh, another other versions say ointment. So it is the essential oil yeah. of that plant of spikenard, or nard Mm -hmm. and it would also be um used with myrrh because myrrh was a fixative or preservative okay so they would have added that too yeah and what's interesting about nard or spike nard is it's very calming it balances the emotions it's helped to calm anxiety and fear which most likely jesus was experiencing this is a couple days before the crucifixion right well and isn't interesting too uh, that worth a whole year's wages yeah that's that's a pretty you know just think of what you make in a year yeah what do you make in a year do you make sixty thousand dollars a year do you make a hundred thousand dollars a year that's how much it was spent to pour over Jesus' head and feet. Yeah, and he said, she'll be remembered, and she sure was. She sure is. Yeah. She still is. Yep. Mary, and they kind of believe it's Mary Magdalene. So um, so that's really interesting. And usually, spikenard wasn't used to uh, anoint at burial, but mm. in this case, that's what Jesus said. It was used. That's all... Just on Sunday, right? Or no, Monday? No, no, that was actually on Wednesday. Oh, Wednesday. That was two okay. days before. Two days. All right. All right. Um, and so then later, Mark 15, they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means place of the skull, where they are crucifying him. Yeah. And so they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And so... Um, when I was reading my Bible commentary, it was saying the reason they did the wine mixed with myrrh was to temporarily deaden the pain and to keep them from struggling as they crucified them, the people. But Jesus refused that. Hmm. So he did not He did not take that. Right. So um, that would be in the early hours, or late hours of Thursday, early hours of Friday, uh, sometime probably after the sun is up, right? Yeah, after the sun was up because they like made the pronouncement first thing in the morning and yeah. then they took him for crucifixion. Okay. So um, then later he's on the cross and this is um, in John 19. And it says later, knowing now that all was completed and so that the scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. A jar of wine vinegar was there. So they soaked a sponge and put it on the, the stalk of a hyssop plant and lifted it to Jesus. And when he'd received the drink, Jesus said, it is finished. And with that, he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. Mm. But what is significant here is the hyssop plant. Okay. So what's, um, why it's significant is because this happened on Passover, that Jesus died on Passover at the time of the Mm -hmm. killing of the lamb, because Jesus was the Passover lamb. And in the first Passover, they used the hyssop plant to take the blood of the lamb and spread it on the lentils, the doorposts. The doorposts, ah. So that they would be protected um, from the angel of death. Okay. That was the Passover. The angel would pass over them if they saw the blood put on the door lentils by the hyssop plant. Hmm. Wow. And so they gave Jesus hyssop and also in psalm 51 it talks about wash me with hyssop and i will be clean Mm -hmm. it is a cleansing one cleansing oil Mm -hmm. do you happen to have some hyssop i have some hyssop here Ooh, that smells really good isn't that beautiful yeah and it literally is cleansing it it cleans off the cell receptors in the cell so it literally is cleansing on the cellular level yeah 
By the way, if you want to go over to huntforwellness.com, uh, this is episode number 91, uh, we have the oils of the ancient scripture mm-hmm. uh, collection, which a lot of these are in, right? Yes, yes, that's um, where they are. <laughs> and there's, because uh, they're used throughout all the scripture, you know, and not just in the Holy Week, yes. uh, like we talked about before, but um, these are, and I, what I love about this collection, they come in the bottles that have the gold foil wrapper. Yes. I think that's so great. So yes. it shows you the, how valuable they are. They are. You know? They're very precious and it's wonderful like on Holy Week and Easter and these special times, um, Passover, to be diffusing these oils. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, or putting them on your wrists and remembering what happened. And so now in John 19, this is after Jesus died. Mm-hmm. Um, it says, uh, like Joseph of Arimathea came and he was accompanied by Nicodemus, the man who earlier had visited Jesus at night. Mm-hmm. And Nicodemus brought a mixture of myrrh and aloes, about 75 pounds. Mm-hmm. Taking Jesus' body, the two of them wrapped it with the spices in strips of linen, and this was in accordance with the Jewish burial custom. Yeah, which, by the way, had to be done <clears throat> before sunset. Yeah. Right? So mm-hmm. that's, yes. you know, that's Friday before it dark. Yes. And then it says, at the place where Jesus was crucified, there was a garden, and in the garden was a new tomb in which no one had ever been laid. Because it was the Jewish day of preparation, and since the tomb was nearby, they laid Jew. They laid Jesus there. Okay. And then the next, or then that was Saturday, that was Friday. And Mm. then on Saturday, nothing happens because that was the Sabbath. Yep. And then on Sunday, the women who had come with Jesus from Galilee followed Joseph and saw the tomb and how his body was laid in it. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes and they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. Mm -hmm. And then when the Sabbath was over, Mary... Magdalene, Mary, the mother of James and Salome brought spices so they might go anoint Jesus' body. Uh And so just the spices that they were using that they specifically mentioned are myrrh and aloes. And they were used for embalming in the Middle East. And so the Egyptians used them. Mm -hmm. The Israelites obviously used them. And myrrh and aloes both are very calming. And myrrh is antiseptic. Hmm. So think about you're going through this hard time. Your loved one has died Mm -hmm. and you're smelling myrrh and aloes, both which are very calming, Yeah, which would help you with grieving and helps you open up your heart Mm -hmm. because it could get closed off with grief. And also since they're antiseptic, you know, maybe the person died of a disease yeah. or something or an infection and it would protect them that's preparing the body from getting that disease. Yeah, That's how they would use this in the ancient times. And they also used myrrh and frankincense and other oils um, in religious rituals. So promoting spiritual awareness mm-hmm. and it's uplifting. So, and don't we want to be uplifted? We want to be lifted up. Yeah. And at a time of death, yeah. um, you, need, you need to be uplifted. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And so on Good Friday, it's sad. Mm-hmm. You know, remembering Jesus' death and what he did for us, died for us, our sins. Um, it's sad. But we know that Sunday is coming. Yes. The sir. resurrection. Yes. Life, he's definitely be lifted up then. Yes, (laughs) he um, bore our sins, so we don't have to bear them ourselves. For those who believe on the name of Jesus, you will be saved, which is such good news. Very good news. Yeah. So I just wanted to talk about like how um, essential oils can be used, like God created the world by his words Mm -hmm. right yes what does it say in the beginning god created he spoke it into existence that's right right and so therefore creation responds 
to our words and thoughts. Mm -hmm. There's even research done on this. And so what we say and think is super important and why God calls us to take every thought captive Mm -hmm. in obedience to Christ and also to tame our tongue. Yes, a lot about that. Because it's super powerful and watch over our heart because we speak from our heart. Mm -hmm. So essential oils are God's creation, a product of the plants that he made, and they respond to our words Mm. and what we say and the intent that we give them. So when they're applied to the body and we direct them in prayer or words, they work even better than used alone. Yeah. So we can pray and it's powerful. We can speak and it's powerful. Or we can use oils and it's powerful. But when you use them together, there's synergy. Really prompt, yep. Yeah, yeah. And these aromatics that have been used, you know, for thousands of years in, you know, religious spiritual routines, they switch on the part of the brain that triggers memories and emotions. Mm. And so we can apply them topically or diffuse them. For the same type of thing. Mm-hmm. Awesome. We're covering mind, body, and spirit, aren't we? Yes. That's how it all works together. Yeah. And um, in James 5, it talks about having the elder come and pray for a sick person and anoint them with mm-hmm. oil. Yes. In the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. The Lord will raise him up. If he has sinned, he will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to each other. Pray for each other so you may be healed. Mm -hmm. The prayer of a righteous man is powerful and effective. Yeah, that's great. So even the Bible is telling us use prayer and essential oils together. So we can use these same essential oils for supporting our wellness and connecting us with God and with each other. Mm Mm-hmm. And, also. and you felt the power of essential oil. Oh, absolutely. I mean, especially, you can, we have a podcast on, it's one of the first ones we did, I believe, on emotions. We've done a few mm-hmm. podcasts on that. And uh, the feeling, you know, we've talked about the feelings kit before. Mm-hmm. And uh, so we'll uh, link some of those in the show notes as well over at huntforwellness.com, uh, episode number 91. Because, yes, um, it's amazing how an oil can change your mood. Right. You know, right. Um, and, you know, we, won't, we don't need to get into depth on that, but, you know, that it definitely, they're very effective in that. Yes. And I don't know if you recall the time that you had this big issue that could not be resolved. Mm-hmm. And we talked it over and we prayed about it, but we didn't have our oils with us. Mm-hmm. And when you got home, I'm like, just put these oils on five minutes apart, the feelings collection. And you came back. And you felt totally it was, released. It was great, yeah. Awesome. Yeah. I mean, you're because you, your body went, wouldn't let go. Yeah. You're just like tense, 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 yeah. tense, despite all of our praying and talking. And so the oils just help your body release the stuff that we talked about. Right. Yeah. So good. It is so good. And um, they're powerful for our daily lives and our relationships and supporting our wellness. So... I love these oils of ancient scripture. Yeah. We'll again over at huntforwellness.com put up the little link for this collection. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's got, we just talked about the myrrh and aloes and hyssop, but it's got other ones I can see. I, we won't have to list them all off, but there's uh, some great ones. Isn't this the one that has the Hawaiian sandalwood in it? Or that's different. That's aloes, has that's aloe. sacred sandalwood. Sacred, yeah, sacred sandalwood. Yeah. yeah that's but it's awesome. got. Oh. Um, Cassio, which is Rose of Sharon, which I love so much. And Annika, that's the only, this is the only place you can get Annika. Yeah, Yeah, there are a few oils in this collection you can only get in this collection and not individually. So check that out. Uh, And just want to remind you that this episode of Hunt for Wellness brought to you by waterdistillers.com. Great machines that produce great water for your great wellness. And you can find out more information over at waterdistillers.com. And it's Holy Week. Yes. So uh, we want to wish everyone Happy Easter. Yes. Um, take in some oils this week. Yes. You know, enhance your experience, mind, body, and spirit. Mm-hmm. And um, just have a blessed Easter. And He is risen. He is risen indeed. All right. And we'll see you next time on Hunt for Wellness.